Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Skyrim Zimik. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 13th of April. India's COVID-19 tally soars past 9,000 mark. Pakistan's appeals for dead relief to combat coronavirus fallout. And coronavirus lockdown takes shine of New Year celebrations in Nepal. And now for all the details, India's COVID-19 tally crossed 9,000 mark on Monday, with 308 deaths reported so far. This comes as a 21-day nationwide lockdown is set to end on April 14. As the ongoing 21-day nationwide lockdown comes near to an end, the total number of coronavirus cases in India jumped to over 9,150 on Monday. In the last 24 hours, 35 new deaths due to coronavirus were reported across the country taking the tally to 308. India has identified several coronavirus hotspots across the country, which have been sealed in a bid to sanitize and prevent further spread. Over a few days, there has been a surge in infection clusters, as India looks to focus on both lives and livelihood and explore a decentralized strategy for lifting the lockdown. So, total 9,152 positive cases have come. टोटल 308 डेथ रिपोर्ट हुई हैं और एक दिन के तहत देखें तो 796 पॉजिटिव केसेस एडिशनल आए हैं और इसके साथ ही टोटल 35 एडिशनल डेथ देश में रिपोर्ट की गई हैं। During a meeting on Saturday, several chief ministers had suggested Prime Minister Narendra Modi to consider extension of the lockdown amid surging coronavirus cases. The Prime Minister is scheduled to address the nation at 10 a.m. local time as the 21-day lockdown ends on Tuesday. Moving on, at least three civilians were killed and one injured in Pakistani firing along the border in India's Jammu and Kashmir on Sunday. Pakistan has repeatedly violated ceasefire despite the challenges faced by the two countries due to the coronavirus outbreak. Three civilians were killed and one person was injured in ceasefire violation by Pakistan along the border in Kupwara and Punch districts of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Sunday. Pakistan troops reportedly resorted to shelling in Kupwara's Rangkwar area, killing three civilians. This came after a similar incident was reported from Punch district earlier in the day. One civilian got injuries on his thigh and arm in shelling by Pakistani forces in Kiran sector in Poonch district. He was rushed to Raja Sukhdev Singh district hospital in Poonch for treatment. The shelling was done. He was a young man who was in his car. He was in the car and he was in the car. He was in the car and he was in the car. We talked to him from SB and DC. He was in the car and he was in the car and he was in the car. He was in the car and he was in the car. Pakistan has reportedly violated the ceasefire over the past three days despite the challenges faced by the two countries due to the coronavirus outbreak. Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan has appealed to international stakeholders, including the United Nations, to launch an initiative that will give dead relief to developing countries to combat the coronavirus. Pakistan's already struggling economy has been hit hard by preventive lockdown to contain coronavirus spread. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Sunday in a video message appealed to international stakeholders for urgent debt relief for developing countries so they can deal more effectively with the economic fallout from the coronavirus pandemic. Pakistan on Monday recorded over 5,350 cases of the virus with 93 deaths. The country's already struggling economy has been hit hard by nationwide preventive lockdowns that have brought economic activity to a halt and caused widespread unemployment. Imran Khan said he was worried people in the developing world would die of hunger as a result of lockdowns 
adding that highly indebted countries lack fiscal space to spend on health and social support. Be appealing to the world leaders, to the heads of financial institutions, to the Secretary General of United Nations, to launch an initiative an initiative that will give debt relief to developing countries to combat the coronavirus. Pakistan is over $100 billion in debt to foreign lenders and spends the largest chunk of its budget on debt servicing. Pakistan will receive $1.4 billion from the International Monetary Fund or IMF as part of the organization's rapid financing instrument to help finance the country's response to the virus. With the increasing threat of coronavirus spread in Afghanistan, President Ashraf Ghani has asked the countrymen to be united. Ghani said overcoming a health and economic crisis requires a unified perspective. As positive cases of the coronavirus increase in Afghanistan, President Ashraf Ghani has said the government is capable to fight the pandemic and the situation is under control. But unity is required. Ghani on Sunday said overcoming a health and economic crisis requires a unified perspective and that it is everyone's responsibility to show at this point that they have a resolute decision, the ability to manage the crisis. So far, over 600 positive cases of the coronavirus have been reported in Afghanistan. In a recent case, a doctor at the Indira Gandhi Children's Hospital in capital Kabul died of the virus. He was the second known victim within the health community. Total 19 people have died due to the virus in the country. Ghani's remark over unity comes as political tension between him and his political rival Abdullah Abdullah continues, despite efforts at national and international levels. The political turmoil has been criticized by ordinary Afghans and religious scholars, who blame the political leaders for thinking about their own interests. The United States on Monday welcomed the latest release of prisoners by the Afghan government and the Taliban. U.S. Special Envoy Zalme Khalilzad said the move is an important step in the peace process and the reduction of violence. U.S. Special Envoy Zalme Khalilzad in a tweet on Monday welcomed prisoner releases by the Afghan government and the Taliban emphasizing that both sides should now accelerate efforts to meet targets of February 29 agreement amid potential for COVID-19 outbreaks in prisons. The Afghan government has so far released 361 Taliban prisoners from Bagram prison. On Sunday, the Taliban too released 20 government prisoners and handed them over to the International Committee of the Red Cross in southern Kandahar province. This came after top U.S. commander in Afghanistan, General Scott Miller, met Taliban leaders in Qatar on Friday. On April 7, the Taliban pulled its technical team out of prisoner exchange talks with the Afghan government, accusing it of delaying under one pretext or another the release of an estimated 5,000 Taliban prisoners. The Afghan government, however, insists on releasing them in phases along with intra-Afghan talks and a ceasefire in place. In news from Nepal, the pomp and fervor of Nepali New Year celebrations was missing across the Himalayan nation on Monday amid a lockdown to contain coronavirus spread. Number of COVID-19 cases in the Himalayan nation have risen to 12. The pomp and fervor of Nepali New Year celebrations was missing in Nepal on Monday amid a nationwide lockdown since March 24 to contain the spread of coronavirus. The celebrations, which earlier used to witness people visiting temples and performing rituals were called off amid the lockdown this year. Only people providing essential services commuted on roads. Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli, while wishing the nation on the occasion in a video message, said that the next two days will determine his government's policy to fight against the pandemic. Number of COVID-19 cases in Nepal on Sunday rose to 12 with three Indian nationals in the country testing positive with the virus. The coronavirus lockdown in Nepal is slated to end on April 15. 
With the number of COVID-19 cases rising in the country, India's technological institutes are designing prototypes for medical ventilators which will be significantly cheaper than the ones available in the market. India's technological institutes are racing against time in the battle against the deadly coronavirus as they have designed prototypes for cheap medical ventilators. A team of engineers in southern Coimbatore city has made a cost-effective ventilator prototype which will be launched in hospitals soon after testing, said Dr. Madan A. Sentel, the director of Atal Incubation Centre, where the prototype has been made. According to Dr. Sentel, the product will cost around 328 US dollars once manufactured. This product was within two days, uh, it was given a confidence and within about four, four days we developed a prototype and we have a functioning prototype at this point of time and it's, uh, it's, we are going to test it in hospitals in the next couple of days and it can support the emergency ventilation part of it. It will cost about 25,000 rupees to sell once we manufacture and sell. Meanwhile, a team of technicians in northern Lucknow city is making a multi-channel ventilator which will help the doctors to speed up the process to treat multiple COVID-19 patients of different age groups at the same time. India with a population of roughly 1.3 billion likely has around 30,000 to 50,000 ventilators according to an estimate by Research Group Centre for Disease Dynamics, Economics and Policy. Amid the nationwide lockdown in India, festivities of Baisakhi and a rush of devotees were missing in Sikh places of worship on Monday. Baisakhi is celebrated as both a religious and a harvest festival in northern Punjab province. Few Sikh devotees who managed to reach Holy Shrine of Golden Temple in India's northern Amritsar city amid coronavirus lockdown took a holy dip on the occasion of Baisakhi on Monday. Baisakhi commemorates the day when the 10th Sikh Guru Gobind Singh founded the Khalsa Panth an army of warrior Sikhs in 1699 to fight the Mughals. The festival is celebrated with huge religious fervor every year, but this time it saw very less number of devotees limited to those who work at the Sikh temple or live nearby due to the coronavirus lockdown. संगत जड़ी है वो सैनिटाइज करके अंदर जा रहे हैं सारे सोच चीज़ ही पालना कितनी जा रही। Meanwhile, similar scenes were witnessed in Ludhiana, where locals this time celebrated the festival by just offering regular prayers at holy Sikh shrines. Besakhi also marks the onset of the harvesting season for the farmers in northern Punjab province, and is observed as a thanksgiving day. After the celebrations, the farmers start cutting the rabi crop. And hope for a better yield with each passing year. Santanu Khas Karke, Mahapurshane, a Benti Kitia, social distance, Manakirako, the Jovi Grukar Ave, Matateke, De Lake, the Chalajave. India is observing a 21 day shutdown, which will end on April 15. The government has been appealing people to pray from homes on such special occasions amid the lockdown, keeping in mind the tough situation the country is facing due to COVID-19 pandemic. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.